How do I prepare for an FRC competition match? Coming prepared to your FRC match is important for making matches run smoothly, keeping your field staff happy, and your drivers calm and collected for each match. The first thing you should think about when it comes to preparing for your match is your battery. You want to make sure that you come to each match with a fully charged battery so that your robot performs at its best and you don't have any field disconnects or robot shutoffs or anything of the sort. Bringing more than one battery is particularly important for elimination rounds. When you're playing matches back to back to back, you might not have time to charge your battery to full in between each match. So having multiple batteries allows you to play each match at a full charge. You should also bring to competition a battery charger. Animark sells a three bank battery charger so you can charge three batteries all at the same time. There are also single battery chargers, but of course the more batteries you bring, the more batteries you want to charge, the more batteries you'll have charged for your matches. Animark also sells the battery beak, which can plug in directly to a battery, tell you exactly how charged it is just by pressing this button. So when you need to check before your match that your battery is charged, plug in the battery beak, check the voltage on the battery, and confirm that it's ready for a match. We also recommend buying a new battery or two each year. Batteries do wear out, whether it's over the course of a year or several years, doesn't really matter. You should still be getting an extra one or two each season uh, that are your best batteries that you should be playing in your most important matches. To every match, you should be bringing your driver station with its laptop and controllers. We recommend bringing to the field a driver station laptop with a built-in ethernet port. If your computer doesn't have an ethernet port built in, and it does have a USB-A port, you can bring a USB-A to Ethernet adapter to connect to the field. If your computer doesn't have a USB-A port either, and instead has only USB-C ports, you can also get a USB-C to Ethernet adapter or a USB-C hub that has an Ethernet port on it. Don't expect the field to have an adapter for you. While it does typically have one, another team may be using it during your match. Without an Ethernet port or a USB to Ethernet adapter, you won't be able to connect to the field for your match. Also remember to bring to the competition your laptop charger. I've seen a lot of teams show up with their laptop, no charger, and try to get through the day with their laptop not being charged in between matches. There is an outlet on the field in your driver station for you to plug in your laptop once you get there. I also recommend bringing a charger with you to every match to plug it in in case your match time slips and it takes too long to get to your match and your laptop loses power. Also remember to bring to each match your driver station controllers and just in case, bring to your event some backup controllers. These things can get dropped, broken, have cables bent, buttons busted. Bring backup controllers so if you break your controller, you'll still be able to play matches. Keep in mind that the driver station does have hook and loop tape on it. So if you put some on the underside of your driver station, when you attach to the field, your driver station won't move if someone hits the glass or if a robot uh, hits the field border too hard. Make sure when you get to your event, you visit the FRC radio programming station in the pits. Make sure to do this as soon as possible so you're ready for your first matches or for field connection tests. Don't swap your radio after you've programmed it at the radio configuration kiosk. If you do this, you won't be able to connect to the field with your new radio unless you reprogram that one as well. Also make sure not to program your radio yourself with your own computer. It does not have the required encryption key to connect to the field. And if you do that and bring it to the field, you won't connect and we'll have to reprogram your radio again. Once your radio is programmed, you won't be able to wirelessly connect to your robot in the pits. So make sure to bring a long ethernet cable or a long USB cable to connect to your robot, robo Rio or radio. If you have something like a limelight or other network device on your robot, you may have both ports on your radio filled. So if this is the case and you still wanna to connect to your robot through the radio at the pits in your competition, Make sure to bring a network switch on your robot so you can connect all your network devices here and not run out of ports. Make sure your radio is placed on your robot in a location that field staff can see. It's one of the first things we check for when you bring your robot to the field and it's not connecting. We want to make sure that we see those four lights uh, on the front face of your radio while you're connecting to the field. While the RJ45 connection to your radio is really secure, you may want just a little bit of added security in case that clip fails. You can lightly hot glue around the connector keep that connection really solid and ship the hot glue away whenever you need to swap the radio or reprogram it or otherwise access that connection. If you're a team with a RoboRio 2, you should also be bringing to the field an extra micro SD card with a stable version of your code loaded on it. In the event that you've made a code change and haven't had time to check it before a match, and it turns out your code's crashing while the robot's enabled, or even while the robot's disabled, you want to be able to swap that micro SD card with a stable version of your code so you're ready to play the match. 
Make sure to also mount your RSL light in a visible location. This is one of the first things that I look at when I look at a robot in the field to determine whether or not it's disabled or if there's something wrong with it. Following these guidelines will help you show up to your matches prepared, keep the competition running smoothly, and help you have a better competition experience. And that is how you prepare for an FRC match.